Peter Gould is the co-creator of Better Call Saul. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. And I want to start, Peter, by asking you, if you had a time machine, where would you go back in time in the filming or process of Better Call Saul? Oh, back, back. If I could go back in time. Oh, if you go geez. back to a day, a day in uh, Better Call Saul, where would you go? Uh, <laughs> I'd go back. I'd go back uh, to the, the room on the first day and say, don't worry, it's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Would that make me work? Would I slack off if I'd known that it was going to work? I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> is, there any, is there anything you'd change about Better Call Saul looking back? The show's so much about whether people can change or what they're Oh, changing. boy. You know, I, it's at this point, it's really hard for me to look back and say that there's, there's anything that I'd change uh you know it, it, it's uh, it's uh it's it was uh the whole thing was a blessing if i could change anything it would just be that somehow it could have gone on for longer and longer because it was the best situation and the best group of people imaginable to work with yeah and peter like for you as you guys closed out the season out of the series of the show what was the most important thing I, I think the thing that was most important to all of us is that um, that the ending would would make sense with the rest of the show, that it would be true to uh, what the rest of the show was, and also that the characters would be true to themselves. And that was actually uh, a real challenge. And it was very scary at certain points because sometimes when you're trying to be true to the show and true to the characters, you worry that you're not going to give the audience something that they're um, they're hoping for or, or wishing for, and uh, so. But but we we felt like you know we felt like we should play the same game we came in playing, and and uh, that's that's what we did. Mm. And look, it was received very well. Like the <laughs> yes, the, it was. the title height, the Whoa, final. What a yeah. relief! Yes. Yeah. So like, how how did you you know how did you sort of managed to thread that needle of being true to the characters, but also satisfying the audience? I, well, I, I don't have, you know, I wish I wish I had the answer to all that. All I know is that, that we, you know, we tried to please ourselves. And one of the big moments for me uh, in the last season was giving the script to, to Bob Odenkirk, you know, and I, very, I was very interested in seeing what he would think of it. And he he loved it right away. Uh, he understood it. He loved it, and that made a big difference. It made it, it gave me a lot of uh, a lot of confidence going into that uh, directing that very last episode. Yeah, you wrote and directed the final, and I did. for me, the biggest question going into the final season of Better Call Saul was: Would Jimmy find redemption? Like it was less about like all the sort of external plot stuff, and it was a very like internal question. That's how true. do you how do you think that question was answered? I, you know, redemption's a big word. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's funny you start talking uh, deeply about these characters, you get into a uh, uh, philosophy and religion really quickly, <laughs> really quickly. I, I don't know that. Here's the thing. I don't think that there's anything he can do to make up for uh, the actions that, that he's taken. Um, I, I, I don't think I don't think that there's really anything that to me that would be, uh, I think, redemption is if somehow uh, he could balance the scales of justice. And I just don't think that's possible. But he does become a better man and he does take responsibility for his actions which, you know, by the way, something, uh, you know, a lot of other characters don't ever do. Uh, so, and, and that was, that was something that was uh, really important to us. And, and uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad people dug it. Mm. I don't feel like he redeemed himself though. I have to say that he did, you know, he did become, however, uh, a good enough person to, to share that last cigarette with, with Kim Wexler and, and uh, to deserve that. And that, that, that's pretty great. Yeah, and like I think a big question of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul is can people change and what is people's capacity to change? Chuck says to Jimmy that he'll never change, people don't change, and we do see Jimmy make a choice in that final episode 
to change? Like, you know, how did you guys contend with that question in the writer's room about how much you wanted to see Jimmy change and how you wanted to answer that question of, can people change? Yeah, oh boy. What well, it's, you know, it's a big question. It's a question, not just in fiction, but in our lives, do people mm. really change? And, and, you know, it, I don't know that, there, that you can have a definitive answer, but I think for me, you can change your actions. You know, you can, you can change your actions. You can change the effect that you have in the world. You can change. And uh, I think that's what Jimmy does. He changes his actions. And, and of course the beautiful thing about uh, this particular character is that he has these multiple identities he goes through. So he's, you know, Jimmy McGill and he's uh, so, slipping Jimmy and he's Saul Goodman and he's Gene Tankovic. And he's the same guy in all of these characters. It's not like a giant light switch, uh, but there's uh, it's a different presentation of, of who he is and, and uh, different parts become uh suppressed or, or come to the fore and, and so much of it is about a guy who's been um, hurt in his life and what's he going to do what's he what do you do when you're hurt what do you do when you don't get what you want um so much of it is is about that and uh well i hate to say it matt i think i forgot the question i just went off on my i went off i went off on my own my own little world there but it, it, it's it's uh, does he does he change um uh, i think in a way he does. And, you know, of course, one of the clues in drama usually is if characters have a theory, it's usually wrong. And so Chuck says, you don't change, people never change. And then uh, Walter White in the final episode says, so you were always like this. Mm. And um, we in the audience know damn well that there's more to mm. this character. Uh, we've learned that. We learned that from watching him in Breaking Bad and then unveiling uh, all the different layers of this guy in Better Call Saul. So uh, I, I think sometimes it's fun to have characters who are wrong about each other. Mm. And I think like, you know, it, it was great sort of comparing that Walter White to Jimmy McGill, like so, who both made very different choices in the final episodes of their respective series in That's terms true. of change and accountability and what they were prepared to do. Um, so, yeah, that was really cool. You talked about the cigarette scene with Jimmy and Kim in the in the series final, uh, which harkened back to the very first scene they shared together in the first. Whose idea was that to go back to them smoking? Oh, boy. You know, it's a it's a really hard thing to tease out. When you've got a writer's room full of all these, these brilliant people, who's, yeah. who had what idea? Yeah. So I, I really couldn't hazard a guess whose idea what it was. But I think when we heard it, we knew it was right. And it's something, you know, what we were hoping for is that there'd be a feeling that after 63 episodes, it's still all one show. There's a lot of story there. There's a lot of character. But uh, one of the things that going back uh, to where you started or, or alluding to things uh, where you started is hopefully it gives the feeling that the whole piece um, has a unity to it, that, that there was a point to it. Uh, and, uh, and, and and I think as soon as we thought about that, uh, I thought about having them lean against that wall, sharing a, a cigarette, uh, it, it felt, it felt right. It felt right. And, and but the, the great thing about it is it, doesn't say nothing's changed it says it says something else uh because boy the circumstances that those two people are in couldn't be more different mm -hmm. but but on the other hand they're still uh you know i don't think they're ever going to be finished with each other i think these these are two people who who mean a lot to each other uh whether they're uh no matter how much they're seeing of each other i think that they're they're going to live their lives in relation to each other uh until until the very end yeah like so much has changed but there's something that stayed the same there's some yes. constant yes. there with them and i think with that scene and it was sort of a strength of better call Saul throughout was uh restraint in the writing and not over explaining things and sort of that i think gives two levels of trust one to the actors to be able to say a lot of things with very little 
and also a lot of yeah. trust for the audience to be able to understand the character's growth and journey and infer meaning themselves. Um, how important is that? was that trust for you guys in the writer's room? Or those well, two yeah, trusts? Yeah, this, I have to say, I think we learned that. Uh, you know, one of the things that time gives you is trust. Uh, time working with other people, working with actors and saying, wow, you know, they they don't really need all this dialogue. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that we found even as far back as Breaking Bad, you know, we ended up writing less and less dialogue uh, for Brian Cranston. And it was the same thing. Uh, in some ways, it was the same things with Bob and Ray and, and the rest of the cast. But Bob was a kind of a unique case because Jimmy talks a lot. He <laughs> talks a lot. Uh, you know, he's got pages. I, I I don't think there's another character in television who's spoken more than uh, than Saul Goodman. And yet, um, you know, the things that he really feels are never the things that he says. Uh, the things, the, the deepest level with him is always underneath the words. And we learned that, boy, my God, th this this amazing cast, they can they they can convey so much. Uh, with just a little bit of spin on the right words. And so we we found that we we could trust that and trust the subtext. The other thing we found was that, my God, the audience gets it. And, and this is something I learned so much as, as, a, as a showrunner is that we, we, we would do scenes and sometimes I'd be a little bit nervous. Is, is the point of this scene going to be clear to the audience? Is this, is this going to is this going to make sense because nobody is saying, what the scene's really about. No one's even alluding to it. It's all acting. And uh, my God, every time we did that, the more we did that, the more we liked it. And uh, the audience, uh, I think you can, you you really, you really can't go wrong with trusting the audience. Uh, with as long as as long as you understand what's going on, uh, probably the audience is smart enough to get there before you. And look, we talked a bit about Bob, but also there's like Ray Seahorn in that final season. And we've got with her the really uh, beautiful moment on the bus in the second last episode, but also the scene yes. where she breaks up with Jimmy, where yeah. we see this really like interesting idea that love isn't enough if your impact on others is toxic and yes. sort of writing those different gears for Kim. Um, what was that like? Oh, you know, it was, yeah, obviously writing for Ray Seahorn is always is always a pleasure because, you know, she's going to understand what you've written and maybe dig five levels deeper than what you even intended. I, I, for me, the, the thing that was important is an idea that I, I don't see around a lot, which is that, you know, oftentimes we think of romantic love as is sort of an island. You know, and 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 uh, you know, it's these two people who are who are intertwined, and that's 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 what it's all about. And and you're kind of you know, it's the it's the whole feeling like the rest of the world falls away, which is what you feel when when you fall in love. But uh, you know, the truth is there are other people in the world, and you know, it, it's 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 there's a uh, uh, there's a strand of thought, which is that, you know, if I'm doing it for love, then it must be okay. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe that's not true. And that's, that's the conclusion that, that Kim comes to, which is that, um, the thing that, that, that lights their fire, the thing that, that, that sparks these two is always, uh, scamming in some form, uh, is, 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 is having an, a, an ulterior motive when they, uh, when they, when they, when they work with other people, it's, 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 you know, there's the insiders who's just them. It's the two of them. And then there's everybody else in the world. It's you and me against the world, baby. And uh, maybe that's, maybe there you can take that too far. Uh, and I think these two definitely did. And uh, I think it's to uh, Kim's credit that, that she uh, realized that and, and, and that's what changed things. But uh, I think it costs her. And what I think I love about that scene so much about the way uh, Bob and Ray play it is that, and we were, there was some worry, there was some concern. Well, she, you know, people would say, well, she doesn't really love him if she's going to leave. And the way they play it, you know, absolutely she loves him. Mm. And this is a sacrifice for her. And I think that's, uh, 
I think that's really special and it's it's a it's a, a little bit complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think uh, uh, the two of them really pull it off. And of course, uh, Michael Morris, uh, the director, uh, did a remarkable job. And Ann Churkis, who actually wrote the scene, uh, let's not let's not forget about yeah. her. Uh, it, it's a it's a it's a pretty special piece of work. Yeah, and I think like whether they can both as characters reach full redemption, we do see them both in that final season make sacrifices to try to pay some penance for. Yeah, they cry and 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 not put themselves first and what they want first, um, yeah. and what's best for them first, which is I think a really nuanced way of ending those sort of character arcs for those guys. Well, thank uh, you. There was so much stuff going on in the final season. You deal with black and white, Breaking Bad stuff, people coming back, different timelines, all this sort of stuff. Um, what was the biggest challenge though? For you in the scene with all those different balls you were trying to juggle well was doing all that and and during like everybody else that year is doing it during covid during it doing COVID. i th i think it was um uh it would took a really long time to shoot the season and it was um because of covid and because we were very ambitious and uh uh you know we had there were other health problems that came up uh and i i, I think everybody uh, was getting tired uh, with, in, in shooting. It's also an unusual season for us because usually the writer's room is still open while we're shooting. And so we're reshaping the story a little bit as we go. And this time we didn't do that. This time the writer's room was closed before we uh, rolled a, the rolled a frame. And uh, I think it worked for us in this case because we'd worked together for so long. It's something... Uh, it's it's always a topic for debate when I have meetings with executives about whether whether it's better to have the whole season broken uh, or not. And it's it's I, I'm not, I don't know my own mind what's 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 always better. But I can tell you we've taken advantage of the fact that we can watch the show and then modify where it's going depending on what we've actually shot. Uh, yeah, there's always that that uh, that saying you know you you want to you want to edit the the film you shot not the one you wish you'd shot so yeah. <laughs> that's 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 part that's part of it i think that you know so it was i think it was just the um just the exhaustion of it but having said that we had a secret weapon and, and i i didn't really know it was going to be a secret weapon but uh when we cast carol burnett it was the smartest thing we could have done because carol came there in those last few episodes and everybody really was exhausted. You know, now suddenly we're in those last few episodes. It's all new sets, locations, a lot of a new, a lot of new cast. Uh, you know, we're trying to deal with black and white, which has a lot of challenges of its own. And you, we had to relearn lessons that probably people forgot in 1955. Um, and, uh, uh, but Carol came and suddenly she raised everybody's spirits because she is, uh, such a wonderful presence. You just, you just can't, you can't help but be your best self around Carol Burnett. And so that was, uh, that, that, that was, that was the, the tough thing was, was sustaining the energy all the way through. But uh, the reward was getting to work with Carol Burnett at the end. And I think everyone on the crew felt that way. So cool. Uh, just to finish off, Peter, we're an awards website at Gold Dirt. We love covering the awards. Better Call Saul has done great with Emmy nominations. It's done fantastic with nominations, but it hasn't won any yet. It's 46 nominations, zero wins. Bob Odenkirk's never won after probably one of the great TV performances of all time. What, Peter, you're a former ad man. What's your Emmy pitch? Ah. I, boy, my Emmy pitch is, boy, I think, I think certainly a lot of us, Bob and Ray and a lot of other folks on the show deserve it, but you know, there are a lot of other deserving people and that's the, you know, that's the tricky thing about awards. Uh, we've been, you know, look, we're delighted with the nominations. It means so much to be there uh, with all its talented people. The truth is, and uh, we've done very well on other, in other awards. We did very well. The critics, uh, which has been, which has been a delight. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I wish I would, I, I just don't have a complaint. Um, and uh, I, I, but I, it would be nice. It would be nice to see uh, somebody from Better Call Saul go home with one of those, uh, one of those delightful statuettes 
but uh, yeah, that would be great. I think yeah. we'd all be we'd all be delighted. And uh, uh, thank you, Gold Derby, for keeping us. Uh, uh, you know, you always you always have us at least in the running, and that's uh, we appreciate we appreciate that. You're in the mix, and uh, yeah. So there you go. There's the pitch for Emmy voters. It would be nice. We nice for an award. Yeah. We there would love it. We'd yeah. love it. We love you, Emmy voters, and we <laughs> we'd love it to be reciprocated. That's all. Well, I can say. Peter, thank you so much for your time today. All the best of luck with the Emmy Awards. We really hope uh, Better Call Saul uh, uh, can take some out this year. And uh, you say that Saul, to Peter, all the shows, man. No, I don't. Uh, so, <laughs> no, no, Peter. Really well done, and thanks for your time today. Really appreciate okay. it. Thanks, Matt. Bye.